Good morning. How's everybody this morning? It is rainy, it's cold. I thought we'd have 20 people here and look at this. Y'all always surprise us. So good to see you this morning. I'm so glad you're here. Look at these beautiful flowers. Aren't those pretty? It's Christine Horn's 70th birthday. So congratulations. <laughs> if you have your bulletin, you can look inside and see all of our new members. We have a uh, welcome to Kevin. Let me put my glasses on. It probably help. <laughs> Kevin and Mary Ann Bialis. Whitney Bullard and Michael McMullen, Darren and Melanie Clark, Keegan Nadel, um, Raymond and Donna Crane, Will and Galen Sasser, and Mike and Denise Thompson. All of these joined in January, so that's awesome. That is exciting. Okay, for those of you who don't have a clue what Acts 2.42 is, because I'm always saying now at Acts 2.42, blah, 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 blah. And somebody came up, it was one of our new members, and said, what is Acts 2.42? Well, that would be such a great idea to explain what that is. In Acts, like in the Bible, Acts 2.42, it talks about prayer, fellowship, and studying in God's Word, and that's exactly what we do on Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night at 545, we meet, and we have a meal, we have some fellowship, we have prayer, and then we have a devotion. But not this Wednesday night. <laughs> this Wednesday night is Ash Wednesday, so we're going to wait, not have a meal, not have all that. We're going to come here at 7 and have Ash Wednesday. So don't forget that this Wednesday's a little bit different. Um, speaking, of, speaking of food, do you know that our, um, you're going to see this flyer. If I can find this flyer, it's somewhere in this. The Men's Ministry Chili Cook-Off is March the 2nd. Now, for those of you who are kind of new and don't know, we have all these categories, and we're going to meet on March 2nd, and we're all going to eat the chili that you're going to make in one of these categories. Wild game, wild game, chili with beans, chilies without beans that's hot, chili without beans is mild or medium, vegetarian chili, <clears throat> just make some chili and bring it. We'll put it in a category. We're going to eat it. We're going to have a competition about it. Somebody will win a prize. But the good news is that the, we'll take donations, and all of that money goes to help our men's ministry, who does ramp projects, who does tons of different community projects around our little Lake Whitney area. Speaking of that, you can't see this. I know you can't see this, but I'm going to play it anyway. This is a video of Rick Fott walking out of the hospital. <laughs> And uh, let me see if I can, they're all cheering him. And you know Rick Fott, he's not moseying out of, the, out of the rehab. He is, for those of you who don't know, Rick is one of the leaders of our men's ministry and he was changing light bulbs in a warehouse down the 933 and he was on this ladder and he fell like 14 feet and just crushed his ankles. And, and he is walking and had, a, I mean, we said praise to Jesus whenever he put on tennis shoes, much less whenever he was walking. So that is a huge, that is a huge praise this morning. Um, I think I've done all the, I'm not here in front of the, no, okay. They're so helpful. Okay. This morning I was reading First John, First John. And I got to these verses. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God, <clears throat> excuse me, and knows God. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God but that he loved us, and he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Can you bow with me? Dear God, we have so many 
uh, answered prayers going on right now, and we are so grateful for those answered prayers. We're so grateful for this community that we can come together, we can work together, we can uh, praise you and give you the glory for the success and the potential that we have. God, help us not miss an opportunity sh to share the good news of what Jesus Christ has done for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, now speaking of, oh wait, turn that microphone back on, okay. <laughs> speaking of um, things that uh, affect our new members, Randy has uh, come up with some things he wants to say. All right. <clears throat> One of the great opportunities we have in following that great commandment is to love God and, and love others. You, you may or may not be aware there's a, there's a process that we have to help every individual, every, every person to move from, from being a visitor to, to a member to a minister. And we, the, the group that I have behind me, we're going to kind of illustrate that and kind of walk you through the process. Uh, this is not a new process, but I got to thinking this is something that we do that the whole congregation needs to be aware of. So let's, let's begin, um, don't fall off the stage, um, begin with, with, with Kelly here. So I'm going to pass the heart because, hold on, yeah. So this illustrates our, our visitor that begins, and, and there are several reasons why people come to visit the White Bluff Chapel. And so they come and they, they, they walk through the door, and one of the first things that we're able to do is to be able to greet them through our SRT, through our, our ushers, and um, just through a loving congregation. And so part of it also is through our welcoming committee, we do have the opportunity to ask them to fill out a card. And many of you that are here have, have done just that. Well, after they visited just a, just a bit more, well, I, it goes to the office. I'm sorry, Terry's representing our office. So on Monday or Tuesday morning, we write a letter. Thank you for your visit. Thank you for being here. After they visited just a few more times, then it's passed on to Ava in the welcoming committee. And we have what we have talked about before, that the pastor's chat. And the pastor's chat is an opportunity to meet at homes and to be able to talk with myself and with Susie and uh, just to know more about what the ministry is all about. Uh, a lot of times we talk about missions and ministry, and, and Betty helps us with that as well. So they come to a point, hopefully, that they, they join. They join the church, and then once they join, it's also passed on to our connections team. And uh, Gary and Cheryl take that, and they help explain and have a shepherd or a mentor that helps them to be able to know what ministries that we have. We could say we have a lot of ministries and opportunities, but what exactly are those? One of those areas is, as Marla represents, is our connection team. And with the connection team, um, I'm sorry, with the care group team, the care groups meet, and um, many of you are part of that. We love to have our new members to plug in to a care group and to be able to experience all the great things that care groups provide. Then it's also continued on to um, ministries, and Betty kind of represents that. So ministries, that's a myriad of ministries that we have in the church and opportunities that we have. And then Cheryl, on the end, um, eats, the eats the candy. <laughs> Cheryl then eats the candy, yes. Kind of helps coordinate uh, a lot of these things and, and gives us an opportunity to even to grow even more. Now, you may find yourself somewhere along this line. You may be a first-time visitor. You may be uh, one that's, that's coming for a while and want to be a part of pastor's chat. You may want to know how to connect. You may want to be a part of a care group. You may want to see ministries and so forth. So every one of us here are, are somewhere along this. And so part of the, the membership care is to provide caring opportunities, not only for pastoral care, but also for ministry. To, so to move from visitor to member to minister. <laughs> and so to help even more, after the service this morning, each one of these individuals will be at a table there in the fellowship hall. We have some more information that can help kind of provide if you're looking at plugging into any of these groups. So again, appreciate our team for all the work that they do and um, look forward to having even more. Yeah, thank you.
Good morning. If you're able, please stand with me as we read the Word of God. This is from Matthew 4, 18 through 20. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's remain standing and sing a portion of that scripture in this next hymn, Footsteps of Jesus. Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps.
Speaking of taking it to the Lord in prayer, will you join me this morning in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, a day that we can come into your house and offer prayer, sing songs of praise, and worship your holy name. Thank you, Father, for the blessings you provide for us. Thank you for this community in such a beautiful and serene setting of nature. Father, you alone are worthy of our worship and praise, and we ask your blessings on every facet of this worship hour. Bless our pastor this morning, fill him with your Holy Spirit, and let his words be as yours. We pray that your name will be honored by everything that is said and done. Father, we pray for those in attendance this morning and those following on the internet that are troubled in heart, whether from illness, loss of loved ones, financial problems, or whatever, is causing them pain. Father, wrap your loving arms around them. Let them know that they are not alone. You have promised to never leave us nor forsake us, and we claim that promise today. If there are among any among us that do not know our Lord Jesus Christ in a personal and loving way, I pray that today would be the day of their surrendering to your precious love and saving grace. Father, I pray for our men and women that are serving our country today in harm's way on foreign soil and those here at home. These men and women sacrifice and put their lives on the line for the safety and security of our nation, and we honor them for their service. And Father, I pray for our nation. I pray that the leaders of our government would wake up to the realization that men cannot solve the problems and issues before us, only our God the God that this nation was founded on is the ultimate answer. God, please bless America. Thank you, Father. We love you, and we offer this prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Howard. It says in Matthew 16, 24, those who would come after me must deny themselves and follow me. Let's sing that hymn right now that goes with that scripture. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Let's stand and sing.
over the years, I've had the opportunity to work and, and minister with God's people. And I've seen them in every, every facet of life, in, in every area. And, and one area is the, their occupations, their vocations. They've ranged from homemakers to businessmen, businesswomen, carpenters, painters, petrochemical plant workers, salesmen, IT workers, ha hairstylists, teachers, school administrators, farmers, ranchers, and the list goes on and, and on. Um, even, even the bank president that was a member of the church and the NASA engineers that were in the church, uh, all of those had a, had a place and, and there was a, a sphere of influence. But, but none of them were really of national uh, acclaim. None of them, if I said their name, you wouldn't recognize any of their names. And yet, they were, they were instrumental in their work, but also instrumental in their church. A moment ago, we had a list of people, uh, or a row of people, that, that kind of displayed that for us. And I hope you saw your place in, in that area of, of moving from not only uh, coming and, and investigating what, what church is all about, but, but, but putting that stamp of saying, this is where God has led me to be, and to be able to say, I desire more than anything to be a minister of the gospel. That, that the importance of not only coming and gathering and listening and learning, but also to go and to tell and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We're going to continue in our study this morning in the book of Mark. In Mark chapter 1, it speaks again of the, the kingdom perspective that we see. Last week, if you remember, we, we talked about the, the journey that Jesus had from, from Judea in the south up to Galilee in the north, fulfilling the words of the prophet Isaiah, proclaiming the good news that the time has come, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and to believe the good news. That the location of that message truly was transformational and it's re very revealing in, in who Jesus was and, and what the mission was all about. You see, he didn't go to the, to the temple, to the religious center of the area. He didn't go to, say, Rome, to the political center of the world. Rather, he went to a um, what we would consider a, a back, backwoods country, um, what could be called flyover country, <laughs> that people don't actually go there, they just kind of kind of fly over it. And there's here that, that Jesus is speaking to, to men and women, proclaiming the good news, sharing the good news, and with that recognition that there is something that is happening, there is something that is, is moving, that the kingdom of God is progressing. So we see the initial call of the apostles that we see in chapter 1, and we'll begin reading in verse 16, the story of four fishermen whose lives were changed. Beginning in verse 16, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men, or of, of mankind, I'll make you fishers for people. At once they left their nets and, and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. They, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So in this account, there, there is there's a pattern that we can see, and, and the pattern is this, is that there is the, the invitation, there is the, the purpose, and there is the response. We see that in the lives of, of each of these, these fishermen, and certainly is true for, for me and for you as well. So we, we begin with the invitation. Again, these are just everyday people. As I've said before, not only for then, but also for now, Everyday people that, that serve a, a glorious God, ordinary people that serve an extraordinary God, 
That's the picture that we have, that, that we, we connect to the gospel story, that the gospel story is about people like you and me who are just everyday people, people that don't, maybe don't know us across the United States or across the world, but God is doing great things in our midst. So let's take a little closer look at the men and the invitation. First of all, the men themselves. It's easy to, to think of these men, these fishermen, as casual fishermen who, kind of like here at White Bluff, decide to go fishing and, and have a good time and maybe catch their limit. These were not casual fishermen. These were professional fishermen. They were businessmen. They had a craft that they were developing. They took care of their boats. They repaired their nets. They learned new ideas on how to catch the most fish. Getting in their boats and throwing uh, the nets for hours and retrieving the nets and gathering in those fish. And they were part of a community of fishermen. Now, though they were respectable and though they were hardworking, they were hardly the, 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 the top of the heap, even in Galilee. See, again, Jesus could have gone to Galilee, this backwards country. He could have gone maybe to the, the local synagogue. He, he may have gone to the mayor of Capernaum. He could have done several things for influence, but he goes and he walks and he, he speaks to men that are fishing, these men that are, that are casting their nets. These men were also Jewish men. They knew about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They knew the Torah. They knew the law. They knew that one day the promise was that the Messiah would come. When we compare the gospel accounts, we, we, we see that this is probably not the first encounter that we see th these men with Jesus. But the passage says that these men, while they were fishing, while they were at work, while they were casting a net into the sea, that Jesus calls to them and says to these men, come, follow me, to, to follow me, to follow my direction, to follow what I have for you. Jesus repeats this with two other fishermen and brothers, James and John, in our passage. Jesus saying, follow me, is actually a phrase that's repeated throughout the Gospels. Now, let's pause just for a moment. When we hear those words of Jesus saying, follow me, <laughs> what, what does that even mean? It, and, and maybe even the men at that time, as they were, were thinking about these words, as it resounded across the lake, maybe the same question, what is Jesus calling us to do? What does it mean to follow me? What does it mean and what does he desire me to do? Now, aside from following Jesus, what does it mean to follow someone or something? We, we hear it a lot in today's vernacular. You see, we can follow politicians. We can follow musicians. We can follow actors. We can follow comedians. We can follow our favorite sports team. We can follow our favorite player of a sports team. We can even follow our favorite singer and, 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 and girlfriend of a player from our sports team. <laughs> There's a lot of things we can follow, isn't there? You can follow an influencer. And then the influencer can influence you who to follow. There's a lot of following going on in our society. When we follow something or someone, we oftentimes identify closely with that person or the persons or the party or the organization. You can hear followers going, that's my guy. That's who, that's, that's my guy. Now that guy probably doesn't even know you. There's a game today, I don't know if you heard, it's kind of a big deal, and there's going to be uh, fans in, on, on both sides of this, of this uh, competition, and you're going to see in the stands and maybe in your own house that when there's a play that's made that makes you excited, 
they, they give each other a high five. Even though they have nothing to do with the play, they are congratulating each other for what has just happened. Why do we do that? <laughs> it's because we follow closely these teams or these people that we see. Following all kinds of things can be somewhat fickle. It's easy to follow one person and then we begin to follow another. You may have a, have a BFF. And if you're not quite in the loop here, but the acronym is the, it's the best friend forever, your BFF. Some of you have a BFFN. That means best friend for now. Yes, followers and friends can be fickle. In sports, it is easy to jump on the bandwagon and root for a successful team, at least until another one performs even better. Followers are rarely devoted. They will follow for a season, but followership fails once the one they are following fades away. It's also rare to have one following. If you talk to somebody, they may have several. They may have a, a whole list of people in different areas of life that they follow, following not one, but many. You see, when we come to the words of Jesus, to come, to follow me, there is a, a different meaning. There is a higher meaning. There is a significance that goes beyond our everyday vernacular. The call to follow Jesus is not to make him a part of your life, not to, to say, I think I'll, I'll think about Jesus in this moment. It's not only to follow when everything is going well, not just to follow when our own self-interest are being met. It's not even to follow him to say that Jesus is number one in my life. Rather, to follow Jesus means that he is the core of our lives. That everything we do comes from that core of being. That everything we do, then we follow Jesus. Everything is, is, is seen through the eyes of Jesus. What, what does Jesus have for me to do? What is Jesus leading me? What does God's word say that I can, can know that I am I'm fulfilling his perfect will? The invitation to be his disciple, to his call, is to set your agenda aside and pick up mine. Follow me wherever it leads. Wherever he leads, I'll go. You see, that's not just a hymn. It's not just a course. It's a statement of faith. I will follow you, Lord, wherever you lead. It's a different kind of following, a different level of commitment. The invitation to follow Jesus is not just for a season. The invitation to follow Jesus is not following him with other sources of life. Following him is exclusive. And, Lord, I will follow you now and forever. So, another question the fishermen may have, and, and maybe you may have as well. Okay, follow me, follow me wholeheartedly. Now, what is it that we are called to do? And that's where we get to the purpose. Jesus says immediately moves from the call to the purpose. He says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You may have in your Bibles uh, fishers of of people. It's fishers of mankind. Jesus is saying to, to be, be one that is looking for the needs of people around us. There's no delay. There's no gap in explaining the purpose of the following. I always thought it was interesting that Jesus, being a carpenter, didn't approach these men and say, come, follow me, and I will make you a builder of men. Rather, he spoke 
to their language, to their vernacular, as they're still holding the net in their hand. And Jesus says to them, just as you understand fishing, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Your calling will be even much greater. He doesn't say, come follow me and I will instruct you in the law. Come follow me and I will show you great things. He says that following is not just what you get out of it. It's not only so you can grow, but also that you have a kingdom understanding. He said, I want you to be outward looking. He says that I'm going to teach you how to fish for men and women. The fish I'm talking about are not taken out from their environment Killed, cleaned, eaten for your own benefit. Rather, these fish are brought into a new life with a new purpose in a transformed kingdom world. He uses this language later as he speaks to Matthew 13, 47. He speaks of the analogy of fish and the kingdom as he says, Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the sea and caught all kinds of fish. You see, the purpose is this. It's crystal clear. (laughs) The purpose of these men is to catch fish, to reach people, to be able to share the message of the kingdom. It's a lesson for us today, isn't it, as believers? Let us never be content with doing things for our own benefit. Let us never be content with simply having a beautiful building to worship. As important as it is, let us never be content with having even the correct teaching and inspiring music. Let us never be content with only to have a full house on a Sunday morning. Let's never be content with programs and ministries and all the great things that we can do. All these things, all these things, if correctly understood, biblically lead to the fulfillment of what Jesus desires, that we come together, we worship, we we follow him, but as we gain knowledge and understanding and wisdom as the Holy Spirit speaks to us, the intent is to be outward looking. You see, the intent is not just to hold it all to ourselves and to say, isn't it great that we can be part of a community of faith? but that we are called to be on mission for our Lord, to be able to walk out the doors and to make a difference to our families, make a difference to our community, make a difference to the world in which we live because the people that God desires us to to reach are out there. Now understand, the purpose of the church is to build disciples, and we do that on a Sunday morning. We can build discipleship and we can grow in that but we also need to recognize that there are people that are outside the walls of this building outside of our uh, maybe everyday lives that need to hear the word of Jesus to be able to live and proclaim that word to be able to say not only do I talk about faith and not only do I listen to faith but that faith is something that is expressive. So I'm going to do this again. I don't always do this, but I think it deserves that amen, right? So, So the purpose of God's people is not just to gain it for ourselves, but to reach a a, a world for Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, good, good. Yeah. I, I don't like to ask for, but, but now and then it's nice to just to be mindful that, yes, amen, amen, meaning so be it. Yes, may it be done. That's who we are as God's people. The fisherman knows that having a knowledge of the techniques, utilizing the state of art equipment, having a nice boat, those are all great, but they are worthless if they never get into the water. You see, the nets have to be thrown Knowledge and preparation are not an end to themselves. Rather, they help lead us to the ultimate purpose, and the purpose is to catch fish. The purpose is to go into our community and be in a place that we may or may not feel comfortable in in sharing the good news. May we always remember 
our purpose. So Jesus comes with an invitation. He comes with an invitation that's tied to a purpose. And then there is the, 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 the third area, and that is the fact that there still is a need for a response. So Simon and Peter, Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, the scripture says, dropped their nets and followed him. Isn't that a great picture? They're holding the nets. They're getting the fish. Jesus says, follow me. Boom. Drop on the nets. We're following Jesus. They go down the shore a little bit, and, and there's two more brothers, um, James and, and John, his, his brother, and they're with his dad, who, again, this is a business. This is, he's, he's developing this business, and one day, James and John, this will all be yours. Jesus comes and says, come, follow me. They leave the nets and follow Jesus. The gospel story is one of the call of the disciples. And over and over we see from Peter and Andrew and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew and James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot and Judas. In each of the gospels, Jesus calls them and they accept the invitation. It's an interesting study, if you look in God's word, that sometimes the invitation is given and people, for one reason or another, reject the offer. Can you imagine? There's too much going on here. I got too much to do. They reject the offer to follow Jesus. We also very well know that in the last week of the, the life of Christ, that, that Judas, one of the ones that said yes, he fell away and he hung himself. We also know of Simon Peter, the very same Simon that, that would say, I will never deny you that in just a, just a time of, of a pressure denies Jesus. We, we see others who, the story of, the, of other disciples who, they said yes, and once they heard all the different demands that were taking place and all the claims that Jesus was making, it, the scripture says they, they, they fell away. So you see, following Jesus, it's a yes. But it's a yes for all time. We are to follow him wherever he leads. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Following Jesus is a glorious thing. But let me tell you this. Following Jesus is probably the most dangerous thing that anybody can do. It's dangerous. Sometimes following Jesus is like going out to the lake and casting either a net or a rod and reel and, and we, 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 we throw a hook out and, and, and it, it's enjoyable. But there are moments and there are times when fishing is dangerous. Did you know that the job of a commercial fisherman is consistently listed as the most dangerous job? Between, in fact, they, they risk suffering a fatal job injury 20 to 30 times greater than the risk for all occupations. Braving the elements of the heat and the cold, avoiding the risk of falling overboard or capsizing, not to mention getting caught in ropes and hooks and other equipment that causes injury or death. You see, being a fisher of men and women also has its hazards. Ask any of these disciples the cost of following Jesus. Ask those martyrs of of 2,000 years, ask them, was it worth following Jesus? Ask individuals who are misunderstood and misquoted because of their faith, ask them, is it worth it to follow Jesus? It is if you have a kingdom view. Ask Jim Elliott, the young missionary in Ecuador who was killed by the natives that he was ministering to. Years prior, 
he wrote these words. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. We may not die a martyr's death, but the question is this for us today. Though we may not die for our faith, the question is, are we willing to die for our faith? Is our faith so important to us, and so vital to us, is Christ the center of my life that if he leads me to come to a place of, of a martyr's death to die for him, are we willing to do that? And, and the other question is, not only are we willing to die for our faith, are we willing to live for our faith? Are we willing to give up popularity and social standing? Are we willing to give up uh, unhealthy relationships or a lifestyle? Are we willing to truly to follow Jesus? For you see, people are no fools. To give up what they cannot keep, to gain what they cannot lose. What are we living for? What are we dying for? Jesus calls us today. He gives us an invitation. He gives us the purpose. He's awaiting our response. Today, the question each of us may ask ourselves today, am I willing to to drop the net and follow him. I ask you to bow your heads together as we pray. We come before him and, and look within our heart of hearts and know that it's easy for us to have words that, that sound good and, 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 and are pleasing, but are they words of, of truth and words that we can, can live for and if called upon even to die for. Are we truly following Jesus today? As we close our time together, I invite you to stand. Let's close with this hymn, Call to Heaven.
It's good to see you too this morning. Let me encourage you as we, we minister together, as we worship together. Um, being together is a, is a, is a joy to, to each of us. Um, as we continue to um, move to the fellowship hall, uh, kind of leave the front space open as we continue to, to care. So ha- have a great morning and a great Sunday, and God bless you as we seek to, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.